Welcome again. Welcome to March edition of uh, Stuttgart Power Platform User Group. So this is the uh, third session we have in March. And as always, so all the news, everything around our Power Platform User Group, you can find on a meetup on LinkedIn, on Twitter, and all the recordings after the session, so usually a few days after are published to our YouTube channel, so you can subscribe there and get notified whenever something new is up. So, like every week, myself, Augustin, and uh, Christian are hosting uh, this session. Christian will not be with us for next week or two, and I uh, want to use this, uh, this opportunity to congratulate him. He just became a father three, four days back and enjoying at home. So he will not be joining for the next few sessions probably. And so announcement as uh, we announced uh, last week as well. So starting uh, additional uh, webcasts. So together with uh, myself and uh, Nikola Ilich are uh, hosting Data Jazz on Tuesdays. So every second Tuesday of each month we are having some great guests from uh, Power BI world, and this webcast is more focused on getting to know those people than uh, just on a technical thing. So, and uh, on April 12th, from 6 p.m. Uh, Central European time, we'll have Will Thompson with us. So, join us on our YouTube channel, or uh, you can uh, watch it watch it live on Twitter as well. And. Regarding what's coming up in a user group, so next week, uh, Jerome will be with us, so I'm missing his name in a, in a slide. Then uh, we're opening uh, April with Johnny Winter, and on 13th of April, then Matthias is with us around Git and how to use it with Power BI. Then we'll have a Easter, Easter holidays break, so we'll not be there for a few weeks, so I see a lot of mistakes on this slide, so I apologize for that. So in the uh, end of April is Mara Pereira with us, so Power BI performance. And not to take too much time from introduction, so if you missed anything, so you can always go to our channels. It's really a pleasure today to have with us Megan Longoria and really a topic that I'm looking forward to here. So inclusive report design and why should all of us care? So Megan, welcome and nice to have you with us. Thank you. Whenever you are ready, you can start sharing your screen. Yep. You know, okay? Yep. Perfect. Then let's get started. Um, my name is Megan Longoria. I live in Denver, Colorado, and I'm a consultant for Denny Cherry and Associates Consulting. Um, I've done data warehousing and data viz, uh, Power BI since it was invented, and I've been a consultant for about 10 years. So I've seen um, lots of Power BI reports and lots of implementations, but I think there's something missing still really across the world in that we don't think about inclusive design, accessible design, um, usable design, all of that's kind of, we'll say it's all related. So I want to introduce you to some people. You may know some of them. And the first one is Adam. This is Adam. Adam is a super cool guy. He's on the Power BI CAD team at Microsoft. He speaks at a lot of conferences and fans line up to take pictures with him. He has a YouTube channel with hundreds of thousands of subscribers at this point. Adam is a trendsetter. When he shows how to make a report with buttons and bookmarks in a video or at a customer site, People watch him and they start making reports with buttons and bookmarks just like his. So next I need to introduce you to someone else. 
If you work with SQL Server at all, you may know this person. This is Kevin. Kevin is a great guy. He is currently a head geek at SolarWinds. It's a company known for database monitoring software. He's been very influential um, in the SQL community and in my career specifically. He's one of the founding members of PASS, for those of you that were involved in that organization in the past. He's mentored and inspired a lot of people. One other notable thing about Kevin is that he's colorblind. Um, he once told me he had a hard time telling the difference between peanut butter and guacamole. He also said he was looking through some old pictures with his wife and she made fun of the avocado green appliances in the house he grew up in. And this was a surprise to him because he never knew that they were avocado green, but it was the 70s, so that kind of makes sense. Kevin is a Power BI report consumer. He loves data. He likes using data to understand trends and comparisons, but he wishes that people like you and me and Adam would stop making reports that look like this because to him, they look like this. It takes him a lot of extra effort to understand reports when they only use color specifically red and green to indicate status. When Kevin receives a report like this, he's very gracious. He doesn't complain. He doesn't always tell people he's colorblind, but he isn't hiding it. He'll share his stories if you ask him. Um, his daughter got those. I don't know if they have them in Germany. They're called Enchroma glasses, and they help people who have color vision deficiency see colors. And he tweeted out the video of him trying these glasses and he was so surprised at what the flowers in his yard looked like. Uh, it was a really interesting and emotional experience for him. Kevin has an invisible disability. An invisible disability is a condition that limits a person's movements or activities, but is not apparent to others. You. Someone want to mute <laughs> and is often misunderstood. Kevin's part of the one in 20 men that have color vision deficiency or color blindness. And you probably wouldn't realize that from meeting him. It's important to remember that just because someone is not using a wheelchair or a cane or a screen reader, that doesn't mean that the person doesn't have a disability. And some people don't want to disclose their disability to coworkers. Uh, they may be quietly suffering, or it just may take extra energy to get things done, but they aren't required and sometimes don't want to tell you about it. So all that means that we can't assume that the intended audience for our Power BI reports are free of any disabilities, even if we think we know them. So I would like to share some facts with you about disability, both in Germany and in the United States. 7.9 million people in Germany are considered severely disabled. Um, that was calculated at the end of 2019, and that was a 1.8% increase over the count two years before. It's pretty evenly split between men and women, and the category of severely disabled means they are considered 50% um, or more disabled. In, in the US, our employment gap is actually about twice Germany's, but there's still an employment gap of 20 percentage points between those with disabilities and those without. So this means that about, if you didn't have a disability, there's about, I think the last stat I saw was about 70% employment 
and the people with disabilities are down closer to 50. There's an additional problem that they often don't get very good jobs and that they often don't get paid as much because of the assumptions we make about them. But there was a study done um, and throughout the US about 30% of college educated employees in the US working full time in white collar jobs have some kind of disability. This could be colorblindness, this could be uh, dyslexia, trouble reading, it could be anything, be in a uh, wheelchair, not be able to use your hands because of a, a medical condition. So there are disabled people working among us every day, even using Power BI. There was a larger global study, or I guess a smaller global study done with a larger breadth of countries, including the US and Germany, that found that 62% of the employees with disabilities have the invisible kind. So like Kevin, you couldn't look at him and see that he has a disability. And more than one third of those with disabilities have experienced discrimination or negative bias. So you can understand why they might be hesitant to make a disability known to coworkers. And this could be in the form of coworkers um, assuming they're unable to perform a task or that they'll take too long to do that task. But because of this, people don't often request the accommodations they need to be productive and happy at work. So Power BI is arguably the most accessible major low code reporting tool out there. And I say that um, because it is incredibly keyboard accessible. I can interact with every visual and every element in the visual, like a bar in a bar chart or a, a point on a line chart via a screen reader or keyboard. Um, the last time I checked, most other tools don't have that. Tableau treats visuals like a static image. They made their filters keyboard friendly, but not the other visuals. So all they can say is use good colors, slap some alt text on it, and you're done. But keyboard users can cross filter visuals in Power BI. They can get to that underlying data after filtering. We even have dynamic alt text now. So a lot of effort has gone into making Power BI very accessible, but almost none of the demos and none of the examples produced by anyone, including some of the Power BI team, are showing accessible data visualization. So we have this capability to make good accessible reports, but just like a lot of people don't follow good data viz practices, good accessibility practices, which should be a part of that, are often ignored. We're not taking advantage of everything Power BI has to offer. And I don't think everyone's going around trying to be evil and make these reports inaccessible, unreadable on purpose uh, by anyone but perfectly able people. But I do think that we're horribly unaware of how other people work and how that may differ from the way that we work in our own work habits. So at the end of the day, whether we meant to make an inaccessible report or not, the, the outcome is that a lot of our reports and demos are not usable by a lot of people. So this is entirely fixable. We can have a great, we have a great product in Power BI and we can have good reports that are accessible. And it's actually not that hard to make a big difference. There are a lot of just small habits that we can form as we're making our reports. And once you start doing them, they just become part of the process and you don't have to think about them as much. So they may start out being very foreign, uh, but then they just become a regular habit. And I'm talking to you because you can make people feel seen. So think about this. Someone who is colorblind sees report after report excuse me, using red, yellow, and green icons in tables and pink and green backgrounds and KPIs in every demo and every report. And then one day you show something 
that provides an alternative. Maybe it's blue to yellow color scale, or it uses icons with different shapes to show statuses instead of just different colors. You have no idea how happy you've made that person. And now that person, if they make Power BI reports, can start copying that technique and suggesting others to do that as well. So it's nice to want to build inclusive reports or accessible reports. Uh, we need to kind of have a methodology around it. And Microsoft actually has an entire site dedicated to inclusive design. So what they mean by inclusive design is that it enables and draws on the full range of human diversity. So they have three main principles. And the first is to recognize exclusion. Exclusion happens when we solve problems using our own biases. So just because we see things a certain way or do things a certain way, we cannot assume that everybody works that way. So as report designers, we need to seek out those exclusions and use them as opportunities to create new ideas and more inclusive designs. The nice thing about all this, and if you take one thing away from this session, it's that designing for inclusivity um, helps everyone. When we make things more accessible, it usually makes them more usable for people with and without disabilities. So when we're designing, if we design inclusively, it not only opens up our products and services to more people, now we've got people who previously couldn't use our report but can, it reflects how people really are. So everybody has abilities and limits to those abilities. Designing for people with permanent disabilities actually results in designs that benefit people universally. Um, we need to talk to our end users more. Human beings are the experts at adapting to diversity. So inclusive design puts our users at the center from the very start of the process. And those fresh, diverse perspectives are the key to making really good reports. And when we think about data viz accessibility, you immediately think, oh, all the visual stuff. But accessibility covers so much more than that. So yes, we absolutely need to make sure our visual elements are accessible. And while there may not be much audio in our reports, people have definitely made reports with sound. We wanna make sure um, that people who use a keyboard instead of a mouse can use our reports. We want to make sure that people who have a hard time reading and remembering things or making decisions can use our reports. So it's not just visual, it's all across the spectrum of how we interact with Power BI. So when I talk about Power BI, I tell people there are three categories of accessibility features, and I'll demo some of this after I go over these. Um, the first is some of these things are just built in. Power BI does this for you. There's nothing you have to do to make this part of Power BI accessible. The second is the built-in features that require our configuration as report designers. And the third is basically you're on your own. There's nothing built into Power BI today to help you. It's not that you can't achieve your goal. It's just there's no actual special feature. You just have to use what's available in the tool and you may use some third party things to help you. So when I say built in accessibility features, I mean things like general keyboard navigation. You can open up any report and navigate it with a keyboard today. There is a high contrast colors view available that you don't have to do anything to make it appear. If someone has windows set to high contrast view, uh, Power BI can detect that and automatically turn the report to high contrast view for them as well. There's screen reader compatibility. JAWS is probably the most well-known screen reader and it's what they originally tested Power BI with, but Windows has a built-in screen reader. It's called Narrator. And then there's the accessible show data table. 
If you've ever gone to a visual and you said show data, there is a screen reader friendly version of that to make sure that somebody who doesn't see the table can still get the information they need. Another thing you might not think about as an accessibility feature is focus mode. If you've gone to a visual and clicked focus so that you can see just that visual, that's actually an accessibility feature. It's getting rid of all the distracting background for someone that can only focus on one small area at a time. So then we can talk about that stuff required no effort. It was just there. This stuff requires more effort. Things like alt text. Every object on your page has alt text in Power BI. You can either type in static information or you can use DAX to populate it. So when a screen reader reads a visual in Power BI, it reads the chart type, like clustered bar chart or pie chart, the chart title, and then the alt text. So this is kind of like a, a short description or a subtitle that we want to provide users who use screen readers to help them understand what all is in our visual so that they can decide whether or not it's worth the effort to uh, dive into that visual, to go and interact with, a, with their screen reader. Another important feature is tab order. Unfortunately, I guess there's not much that can be done about it, but when you build your report page, tab order is the order when you literally hit the tab key that it moves, navigates from visual to visual on the page. By default, that order is the order in which you added a visual to the page. Um, I'm not sure about you, but I have never once built a report that, um, sorry, just moving this over that I put all the visuals on the page in the order in which I expected them to read. I build, I've never built it exactly from top left to bottom right. Um, I, I just kind of put things on the page and then I go back and rearrange them and figure out what order I want. Chart titles are also a big accessibility feature. If you're going around in Power BI and just letting Power BI auto populate the chart title where it says like the field name by the other field name you've put in there, you know, sales by month, you're missing an opportunity to be much more expressive, much more um, explanatory. If we have conclusions in our uh, charts, we want to point it out. We can be very explicit there. So if we want to say, you know, sales are down year over year and point that out because we've got kind of a static report we're doing, we can do that. Uh, we can also use conditional formatting in our chart titles. So we could say sales are whatever my DAX measure returns year over year. And that way it can be dynamic and, and um, update as the data refreshes. And then we have header tool tips. If you've ever hovered over a visual in Power BI uh, and seen the little question mark, we can fill that text in to help people understand a visual more. This could be, um, you want to explain how to read a chart. Sometimes I use violin charts um, and a lot of people are not familiar with those. So sometimes I add information in the header tool tip to explain how to read it. It could be citing a source of information so people know where it comes from. Anything that takes your attention away from the report, if you have to go look up a definition or look up a source to understand what it's talking about, you go to another you know, browser window. People have trouble switching back and forth. People with um, you know, attention deficit disorders, people who have a hard time reading are gonna struggle with that. So the more you can have things kind of built into your report, um, header tool tips may help with that, the easier it is to consume. And then the last features are the, you're, you're on your own features. There's nothing to really help you, but they're very important to do. 
So that includes color contrast. Have you ever seen a report that maybe was a white background and light blue charts and gray text and you kind of have to squint at it because it just doesn't stand out enough on the page that the charts are a little hard to read that if they would just make that color darker, um, it would be so much easier even for a person with with perfectly fine vision to get through. That's color contrast. Not only does color contrast make things more accessible, but using it correctly actually creates more visual interest in your report. But there's nothing in Power BI that helps you with color contrast today. So there are third party tools that I'll show you um, to help measure that. If you've ever heard of WCAG, uh, Web Content Accessibility Guidelines, they have a standard for measuring color contrast that you can use to help you. So it's not a like, look at it and go, I wonder if that's too light. There's a way to measure that you can you can officially say, you know, that's probably too light. So if you have accessibility standards to meet, you're probably using that color contrast calculation. Um, I have a tool for that. There are, there's a lot of debate going on right now um, about the calculation, and that may change over time as we learn more. But I think for, for most of us in this session, we can just go with their calculations. And then when they update it, we'll follow the new calculations. The, the conversation is around um, darker backgrounds with lighter colors on them. So they think that maybe because we use a um, a calculation that focuses on luminance that the calculation should be adjusted. But you don't really have to worry about all that. I nerd out on that stuff. I find it interesting because it's all about how our brains and eyes take in and process information. But I'll show you a tool that um, can help you test color contrast and test different color combinations as well. Uh, we already talked a little bit about color colorblind friendliness. Um, the more accurate term is color vision deficiency because most people see some forms of color. It's usually uh, their green weak or red weak. There are a few people that see very monochromatically, but um, for the most part, it's not that you can't use color. You just need to use colors that can be easily distinguishable. And the general rule is that you want to add something else, a shape, an indicator, something to go with the color. But you can actually choose colorblind friendly colors. And there's a good Adobe tool for that that I'll show you in a second. Once you figure out your color contrast and you've got your nice friendly colors, you can put them in a report theme so you never have to figure all that out again and just keep using that report theme so you know that you've got more accessible colors. So there is a full, I'll pull it up real quick, Power BI report accessibility checklist on my website. Most of this is um, also on Microsoft Docs. So if you search for Power BI report accessibility, you'll see a lot of this because I let them borrow my content to put in there. <laughs> um, I keep mine a little more up to date than they do. So Either one is fine. If you need the more official source to point to, that's good. But I promise to keep this one up to date. There haven't been any new accessibility features in, um, in a while other than tab order, which I'll show you the new button for that. But if you if you are new to this topic and you're not sure what to do, like somebody asked, you know, do we need the four to one um, color contrast? The actual answer to that is in here. So if it's text, um, we want 4.5 to 1. If it's a non-decorative, non-text element, like the bars in a bar chart, it can be 3 to 1. So that type of information is in here, and that's on my, my website, and I'll have the link at the end too, but it's datasavvy.me. So that list was a little long. You saw it doesn't quite fit. <laughs> on a page I had to scroll down. If you have to boil it down and you want to make good um, good habits and maybe start start a little slower, I have five things that I call my bare minimum accessibility for Power BI. You should be doing these five things. I hope you'll do the entire list, 
But if you don't, then do these five things. And the first one is color contrast. I cannot stress how important it is to have colors that are easily distinguishable. Even for people who don't have any difficulty um, distinguishing colors, have you ever seen somebody makes a line chart and it's got like, you know, nine or 10 different lines in it and sometimes they cross and it's hard to follow and you almost have to take your finger and, and follow it or your mouse pointer to try to figure it out. Of course, in Power BI, we can click to highlight it, but if you've run into that, that can be what it's like for other people. So we want to make sure both our charts and the text, which is what I see people missing most often, have sufficient color contrast um, from the background as well as from each other. We want to use really descriptive, purposeful chart titles. So again, that's the, you know, don't let Power BI auto populate your chart title. And even if you decide you're going to do your chart title another way, maybe you have a text box or you're combining some charts together. If you add a chart title and then turn the title off, the screen reader can still read that title. So even if you're not going to show it, still di give descriptive chart titles. Um, the third thing is for color vision deficiency. And it's just to avoid using color as the only means of conveying information. So if you are showing KPIs and you're using red, yellow, green, that's fine, but also add an indicator, whether it's like the exclamation point or the up, down arrows, or just shapes like green is a green circle, red is a square, yellow is a triangle. Anything extra you can add, you're basically double encoding it because we know that color is not always a um, sufficient encoding method since not everyone sees it the same way. The biggest, easiest thing you can do is set tab order. Tab order, again, is how we navigate when we use a keyboard. Uh, and we need to set it because it doesn't really make sense in the order it starts out. But there is a somewhat new button um, that can help with that. And I'll show you that in a second. I'm just going to do one big long demo after this. Um, the last thing is to try to get rid of jargon and acronyms from all your charts. And this helps people who have trouble reading or trouble remembering, but it also helps people who maybe speak another language as their first language, so they're reading a report in their second or third or fourth language. People who are new to the job and maybe don't know your corporate um, lingo, or people who are maybe learning about a more technical subject that they don't know all the acronyms for. So this is one of those that's very obviously going to help with accessibility, but it also just helps with general usability. I'm going to open this report. And I'm going to show you a couple things. First, we're going to look at tab order. Tab order is in the selection pane. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. It's hiding behind layer order. So we go to selection, we hit tab order. And I wonder if it'll let me. I actually have this set correctly because I did this earlier. But if you can see, there's an outline as I tab through. I'm on the kind of green total sales box, the visuals. This order makes sense, at least in Western cultures. We're going from top left, bottom right. I'm just using things I've already made, and this is a report that I use to fix things, but, um, and this is a little easier to see since it's a white background. I have not set this one. This order doesn't make sense. So if you look, the very first thing they land on is a logo. Um, that logo is not very useful. I don't need to land on it. Then we get our title, then we go to date and product. 
And then internet sales by product category. I would have rather stayed kind of in the slicer area, finished all of those, and then moved over. So I can fix that. Here, if I don't want them to land on the logo, I can actually, um, there's a little button right there that I can click to hide it, and then it'll show hidden um, and move it to the bottom of the list. So now I just need to rearrange my order. So I can either move them by dragging and dropping them, or I can, um, move them by selecting them and then hitting the arrow to move it down. So at the end, we generally want um, kind of left to left top to bottom right. Here's an example of where going exactly by Y and X coordinates um, might not be what we want. But in my darker one, I do want top left and then this slicer this line chart, those boxes, and then my map. I'm gonna move this up just a little so that we can use the special button. What came in last year are these tab order buttons at the top. So there are three buttons here, and the first two are for expanding and collapsing groups. Oops. The last one, though, is the magic button. And so it's have tab order match visual order. And when I click that, it sorts them into, um, basically, it sorts by Y, meaning vertical, and then X coordinates, horizontal. So if I just move these around, um, let's do that and then I hit tab order, you'll see that it fixes that for me so that it goes text box, slicer, line chart. And it's doing sales by city because that visual starts, it's got a higher Y coordinate than the top of this um, card. So that's why this one came first according to its algorithm. But like 75% of the time, what you need is exactly the have tab order match visual order. So if you just click that, you're, you know, 75% of the time you're there. The rest of the time you just come over here and adjust these. So I may want my map to be last. But you can see it's just dragging and dropping. This takes five minutes maybe max per page. If you're really slow, you've never done it before. But this means that everyone who uses a keyboard can now use your report in a more realistic fashion. So I can, um, you can see I'm hitting slicers and then tab to the line chart and I can enter my line chart here and select a dot. Everything in these visuals is keyboard accessible. But if you have to guess which uh, visual you're going to land on because the tab order isn't set, it makes it much less enjoyable. So while we're here, I'm going to do Alt F, Alt Shift F11. And this may look like the show data table um, that you're used to seeing if I use a mouse and go to show as a table, but it's just slightly different. Same functionality, but you'll notice this table is a little different because it's using good um, HTML that is screen reader friendly. So I can get to every menu item through a keyboard. I can select items within my charts. I can have it read what's there. So for instance, total sales under general has an alt text box here. And I decided to make this static. So I said total sales for the selected category, month and location. So that's what the screen reader would read. But I could also do something like 
create a measure. Text total sales equals. Um, what's it called? Um, sales. We'll do. I don't remember what this says anymore. We'll just leave it like that and do. Oops. We're just going to get the number. I could add text to it if I want to um, and concatenate it to the end. But everything can be conditionally formatted. So I could use, oh, I have a spelling issue in there. <laughs> I could use my alt text total sales uh, for that. At least I could last week. We'll see. <laughs> oh, it's because it wants it to be text. That's why. I'm going to cheat, though. I'm just going to add any other column in there for now. So it's going to make you choose um, a text column, and then it's going to, if you don't have a measure for it, it's going to have you choose first or last. But now when it reads it, it's going to read whatever the output of that um, DAX calculation is. So you have that option or you have the static text to give them more information because a screen reader actually can read that number. So just like any other um, visual, there is a screen reader accessible version and it can get into that number, but it takes more clicks. So the more I can tell a person about, um, you know, about the visual without them having to interact even more with it, that's better. So here's another thing that we can fix. I basically kind of let Power BI name this chart and I just called it sales by month, but we know it's 2020. And so I could have fixed my title. So let's do sales in USD by Oops, month. We even say 2020 sales in USD by month. So it removes some of the ambiguity around what am I looking at? Well, now I know it's for a very uh, specific year. It's listed in USD. We might have said dollars depending on how familiar the audience is um, with this abbreviation. That's the type of thing um, that we may may do just little enhancements like that can make a big difference for someone maybe this one chart is um not that interesting or not that hard to get through but let's say there's 10 charts like that on the page and you're tired and it and everything is new because it's your first week in a job little things like that where you've worked on it too long so you know that it was 2020 sales in USD or in euros by month, but someone who's brand new to the report might not. So use your titles to be very descriptive. And now I'm going to pull up my handy dandy color tool as soon as I find where it went. Ah, back here. <laughs> It wants to hide. Let's see. We'll try it again. There we go. Um, this is what I use. It is a free tool called Color Contrast Analyzer to check to see if my colors are OK. So let's try a couple. When I'm checking text, my text is in the foreground. 
<laughs> it's kind of angry at me today. Sorry, I've never actually had that happen before. Their new version must have a uh, that or Power BI is just taking over. So it's got the eyedropper here. I can go and um, choose anything. What I'd be more interested in is um, checking to make sure, notice these have kind of colors behind them. If this green compared to this white is at least 4.5 to one. But I also want to check these dots in my map and make sure the green, the light blue dot has a color contrast of three to one compared to the background. So you can do this here in desktop with that kind of tool, or you can um, use a browser tool. So I have a couple of extensions that I like in Chrome, and one of them is Color Contrast Analyzer. So I can actually, and I like the squint test as well, I can use those to help me check things. So let's see if it'll let me do it on this web version here. Um, and I forget what all is, is, um, I think all this is available in Edge as well. So I can capture that. And then it'll scan it for me and it'll check all the colors. So there's a bunch of different, um, different tools like this. I just prefer that one. There's also some color blindness tools like Coblis. So you can take any image and just paste it right in and see what it looks like for someone with different types of color blindness. And what I, so there's green weak and then there's green blind and red weak and red blind. So what I tend to do is design for the most extreme um, condition. So let's go back to normal. Notice all the orange, pink, red. And this is what it looks like for someone who is red blind or green blind. Blue blind is less prevalent, but is still a thing. A lot of times what is easiest to do is to turn it to monochromacy, meaning it's just a uh, grayscale. If your report looks good grayscale, everything is distinguishable, then you can be um, happy with your um, with your color choices. The other thing you can do is before you start making your um, report, you can pick colors. So here's a color contrast um, calculator that you can use. And then here's a color blindness um, color theme generator that'll warn you when your colors are too close to each other. So I have five colors. The third and the fourth have these lines inside them because they are not distinguishable from each other. But if I moved one, now they're okay because the line is gone, no conflicts. So if you need to create a color palette, you can, you can either move these dots or you can type in the hex values or adjust it from these sliders. But this way it'll tell you if you have potential color conflicts as well as show you um, from the three common types of color blindness, what this looks like for them. So my regular colors are here, but that green is actually yellow to a whole lot of people. So this is a good tool to check out kind of before you get started so that you can plan your color palette. So 
So what I tried to use, which clearly needs to get an updated version, uh, that I really like is Color Contrast Analyzer, and that's from TPGI. So that's a free desktop download. That way you can do things before you publish. Um, but there's also, again, those, those browser um, add-ins as well that you can look for. I, I just want to remind people that we often think of disabilities like permanent disabilities, like colorblindness or the loss of a limb, but disability could be temporary or situational as well. So have you ever been in a bright room trying to browse a report where reflections uh, affected the readability? or pulled up a report on your phone in a parking lot so you could quickly check a number? How about when you started a new job and or were learning English as your second language and you had to read information with a bunch of acronyms and organizational terms that you weren't familiar with? Or you had a fight with your partner, child, dog, and found it difficult to concentrate that day? Making these reports more accessible helps with all of that. Adding accessibility to your design habits now means that you don't have to go back and try to retrofit all of your reports later when there's an obvious accommodation needed. When you get a new coworker who needs you to have tab order set because they don't use a mouse, they use a keyboard. Or when you have a customer who is in fact colorblind. I was talk I'm a consultant and I was talking to someone who was looking for help with Power BI reports and they sent me their corporate color theme and it was all green and brown. And the guy was like, I'm colorblind. I I don't know what this looks like. It all looks the same to me. <laughs> And so I asked him, you know, have you brought this up that that those colors aren't good for data viz potentially because you can't use them together? He was like, oh, well, no, not really. And I have a feeling stuff like that happens a lot. It's not intentional. Some marketing department just came up with their colors and then they thought, oh, we should use this for reports. But it is actually causing a problem for one of their employees who doesn't feel empowered to speak up. So when you do these little things, you fix some permanent disabilities, you fix some temporary conditions uh, that you know happen to all of us. If you've got a new child at home and you're trying to work with one hand while holding a child, you know, you know whether things are mouse or keyboard friendly can can be a big help to you. So I have another person that I would like to talk about. This is John. John is known as the DBA with a bat. He is my coworker at DCAC. He has uh, multiple sclerosis and his MS is under control right now. He doesn't talk about it much. Um, every once in a while, he makes a comment about health insurance and the cost of medication. Thank you, US government. Or he blocks his schedule to go to a doctor appointment, but his MS is largely under control. But what he will tell you is that he could have a flare up at any day and it could last for a few days. And that might mean that he has increased fatigue, difficulty concentrating, blurred or double vision, muscle spasms. So when I make reports inside of my company, like we have timesheet reports where we're checking how much time we've logged against each client, for instance, I wanna make sure that they're keyboard accessible with good color contrast and helpful chart titles. So that way, if John wants to work during a flare, I want him to be able to use those Power BI reports to get the information he needs. Building accessible reports is a bit of a resilience technique to keep him productive in addition to the altruistic motive of, of helping my friend. So, the thing that I see a lot is when you do something cool and you show it to other people, they copy it. But if you didn't set your, you know, accessibility, meaning your tab order, your color contrast, all of that, everybody else is going to copy off you and they're going to use the same lack of good tab order, the same indistinguishable colors. So if you 
you know, if you remember, basically, you're a trendsetter. People are going to, as you figure out how to do things in Power BI that are cool, people are going to see it and want to copy you. Just make sure that they're copying something that is inclusive of all the intended audience you may have, whether that's, you know, colorblind or low vision or um, have muscular issues where you can't use a mouse. So I'm going to introduce you to one last person. My dad lost his vision when I was a little girl. He has glaucoma, among other things, and it's progressively gotten worse. And he says it's like somebody put a sheet over his face and then just punched out little holes. And that's like what his eyesight is. This has resulted in some very awkward and funny memories, like he burned a tablecloth at my birthday party when he was going to light the candles on my cake. Um, he spilled a drink on my friend because he couldn't see the drink was sitting there. <laughs> he stopped working and driving when I was about 12 years old. So as a teenager, I was occasionally the chauffeur. And I swear he accidentally downloads every virus on the internet because he can't see what he's clicking on all the time in a web page. But my dad got new tools. He has the high contrast keyboard with big letters on it. You see those giant yellow keys. And to the right of his computer is a giant magnifying machine. It's actually a combination um, of video magnification and text to speech features. He learned how to use Windows speech recognition and an app called Zoom Text, which is what he's he's got the printed guide to on his machine over there. And he's using Excel and Word again. He learned the keyboard shortcuts because it was recommended as being easier than, than a touch screen or trying to use a mouse for him. And now he can use his computer. He just changed a couple of things about how he works, and he went from gi literally giving up on using his computer, not looking at it for you know weeks and months at a time, to being able to, you know, at the minimum, he has an Excel list of his medications and things like that that he keeps up to date. Uh, so he can do that on his own. He got some, some self-sufficiency back just from a few accessibility tweaks. So we're in Power BI land, we're kind of all about democratizing data. We want to communicate data because it's so important in organizations today, and it is, but we told people we were democratizing data and making analysis available to everyone. And Power BI is in a state where we can do that, but the final missing piece is producing accessible content. So, I would love it if you would keep in touch and send me comments and questions or just help create awareness about improving accessibility in our Power BI reports. Or just do your part, do my five bare minimum steps in the next report you create. I don't see questions in the chat. But if anyone wants to comment <laughs> or question or unmute. Cool. All right. I, I have one question, Megan. So in your in your work throughout the organizations, how how many of them are actually aware of uh, accessibility improvements and are they doing it? Um, I would say it's probably half and half right now as far as awareness. If they work with me at all for data viz, I talk to them about it and I will not build reports without at least the basic accessibility. So whether or not I can get them to do all of it is, is a little bit different question. The way that I try to work that into organizations is if they already are doing quality checks like you know, data validation or does it conform to some kind of standards, you just add a couple of checks in, like set your tab order, check your color contrast type of stuff. You make report themes so that, you know, only one person in your organization has to think about this and then everybody else gets to copy off of them. So those efforts tend to work pretty well, but it's just a lot of, you know, not 
people not being aware. I have had um, clients who had to go back and fix a lot of reports because someone joined their team and they needed adjustments to the reports. So that organization is now very aware. But I also work with several um, groups that are like nonprofits. I've worked with schools and schools, especially in the U.S., have um, mandates to make accessible content as well as governments. So those are a lot easier. People are usually just not aware of how to do it in Power BI. Yeah, so pretty similar questions. Uh, so here in the chat is by Ron. If you need to choose the minimum adjustment, what would that be? I go for a color contrast. <laughs> I could go for that as, as the top thing. That was number one in my list as well. I think color contrast and tab order can take you a long way. So I, I would agree with that. Um, there are, for those of you that do Power Apps, they actually have a much better um, accessibility story and they had an accessibility guide long before Power BI. They have some tools built in like an accessibility checker. And that's what I'm really hoping uh, will make its way into Power BI so that we kind of have, if you've ever used PowerPoint, they have the same thing. Um, it's kind of telling you as you build things, hey, you didn't set your, your, it's called reading order in PowerPoint, but it's the same thing as tab order in Power BI. Hey, your tab order looks off or your, it, this looks like your color contrast won't be right, that type of thing. So I, I think as we start making it more kind of real-time feedback, we'll all get better at it. Until then, that's why I have my kind of top five accessibility checklist. Do your color contrast, your titles, your tab order, um, your alt text, that kind of stuff. Because most of those are five minute adjustments. Also interesting question from UV. So how do you convince the organization that they need to spend extra effort to ensure accessibility? I'm very much of the opinion that you ask forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> so you just start doing it. Start improving your reports and find people, find allies that can help give kind of success stories. So they don't even have to be have a known disability, but let's say you improved your color contrast. Go find a friendly user and go, hey, did you notice? Do you feel like that's more readable? And start just gathering little stories like that. You can usually find them or hear about them. Um, just little improvements and say, you know what, that took me five minutes. And kind of spread the word that way. But small improvements with associated success stories is usually the only way to do it, unless you get sued. And then that's the other way. <laughs> you can get a lot of bad press from it too. And if people are making Power BI reports public, like they're doing kind of a embedded or published to web thing, that opens you up to a lot more um, um, users, like end users that are not within your organization. And you have to be even more cognizant there. And I don't know all about the laws in other countries, but in the US, they're actually saying that websites are, you can sue over inaccessible websites, that your websites um, should be, should allow you to do um, what you need to do, like ordering a pizza <laughs> um, in an accessible manner. So people with screen readers, that type of thing. So if the altruistic motive of being very inclusive doesn't work, the monetary and bad press motive usually does. Also, Anthony has a good question. So are there any are there changes that Microsoft Power BI team could do to make it easier to design reports with accessibility in mind? <laughs> yes, there are definitely changes. Um, like I said, I'd really like to see an accessibility checker in there. Um, I would like, I think a really easy thing to do, it's kind of hard to say, here's one color palette that you can use for everything, but they have one high contrast color palette and I kind of hate it. It's it's pretty ugly. Um, it is. So <laughs> it is, it's really hard to look at and it makes people think that um, you ha your data viz has to be ugly to be accessible and that's not true at all. So an easy thing for them to do would be to get better color palettes. I actually went there and checked the default one and the first five colors were pretty good. Um, I ran it through the Adobe Checker thing. So they they do have a good start, but 
anything they could do that's built into the tool to help people understand color contrast uh, would be more than welcome. Also, I wish they would quit making demo reports with crazy backgrounds because then other people do it and you can't read it because the color contrast okay. against the background is not good. Um, I like so that, that they did sorry. the tab order thing a couple months ago. I guess it's been longer than that now, but that was one of my big, big gripes. What I have heard um, people ask for that I think would be really interesting is in PowerPoint, it auto generates alt text. It's not always perfect. Like sometimes you'll have an image and it'll get the image wrong. It'll think it's, you know, a rock when it was really an animal, but they're using AI to generate alt text. So when people forget to put good alt text in, um, it would at least put something in and that would be a better start than what normally happens now. I would like to see that come to fruition. It's almost kind of the same AI that the natural language stuff and smart narrative have um, going on. Like they have to read the data that's on the page and then figure it out. So I hope that that becomes a thing. <laughs> so is asking, do you know any Power BI users out there who have a good repository for accessibility reports? So, as far as I know, there are not there is not a lot of content out there. This topic. No, <laughs> there's not, and that's why I do this session. Is I want I want more of them. So if you make a report that is accessible, you know, publicly accessible, I will happily, um, you know, tweet about it or post about it on LinkedIn so others can see the example. But there isn't like a library of reports that are accessible um, that that I'm aware of. Well, let's let's make a joint uh, user group effort. And on the other hand, we can all go and uh, put the idea of uh, color checker uh, Power BI and vote for it. I don't know. Is there already idea? Power BI I think there that. is already an idea out there. But yeah, if you search color contrast, you, I think you'll find it. OK, so if there are any questions, so yeah, Anthony said Enterprise DNA had a challenge. I think that had accessibility in mind. Yeah, and so did the Power BI team a year or two ago, but it um, didn't go very well. Yeah. Yeah, Kai is writing. I know he's also passionate about the topic. Okay. There's a library to improve talks that covers accessibility for speaking. Yep. Yeah. Um, uh, that is true. Ron is asking for a five point list. So if you missed it, so either Megan can put it the slide back or you can check the recording later. So I promise it will be on uh, our YouTube channel in uh, next day or two. Yep, it's also on my blog. I have a blog post about it. So if you just search bare minimum, um, you should be able to find it there as well. Okay, if there are no more questions, so I want to say a big thank you to Megan. So this was a really important and interesting topic. So I have to admit for myself, I didn't always have a lot of those things you spoke about in mind when I was developing reports. So I will try to do my best to change it. And for all the others, so pretty much slide is uh, up here. So next week, uh, Jerome is with us from Microsoft and talking about composite models. And regarding the all the upcoming things, see you on Meetup and you can visit us on our YouTube channel. So thank you again to Megan and thank to every one of you who join and spend another evening or morning depending on where you are coming from with us and much that's it see you all next week <laughs>